Hello, everybody. This is Angel Arts, and welcome to session zero of a brand new tabletop campaign with a brand new set of beautiful, handsome, and everything in between faces. This is the session zero for the Athenaeum tabletop campaign. For those of you who don't know what exactly that means, um, I have some handy links either around this video or down in the description below that will take you to an explanation about what this whole thing is about, um, what the premise is, high level pretty much every single character in this particular tabletop campaign represents a specific genre in a storybook and somehow these different characters from these different genres of storybooks end up meeting together and end up jumping from one storybook to another and most likely shenanigans ensue um if that sounds like a little bit of an odd little premise it is and it's meant to be odd but it's hopefully meant to be a bit fun as well um and uh the players who are here before you uh believe it or not uh went through a whole audition interview process to get to where they are now so if you're curious about their journey up to this point, along with the journey of some other awesomely amazing candidates who also made some extremely strong and powerful um, auditions and interviews as well, please be sure that you check out the playlists again in the description below. So before we actually get into the thick of things and uh, also, before I get too deep into things, if you are here to absorb the full story, you will definitely want to watch Session Zero because we are actually going to be role-playing with these characters today um, that are actually canon parts of the main storyline. So don't just skip over to Part 1, even though it is Session 1. Session, ge session Zero is where you want to be if you want to check everything out from the very beginning. So, with that in mind, let's go around the room and introduce everybody. Uh, I would like for everyone to give their name as in how you'd like to be referred to as, your pronoun, um, a brief synopsis of your character, including what genre they represent. Who would like to go first? Oh, and also where you're from, if you could do that too, please. So I'm Joe, and I'm from Houston, Texas, he, him. My character is Sam Ben. He represents the period crime stories. So the kind of roaring 20s to swinging 40s time period. Nothing really nailed down, just that historical true detective, even though it's very exaggerated and untrue, genre. His name is Sam Bennett, and he's just a private eye. And uh, Joe, could you also uh, tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel as well, because you're active in your YouTube, YouTube channel too, so people might want to check you out. Yeah, so we, I have a YouTube channel where I do a lot of RPG tips and tricks, as well as miniature painting. And so put out a few videos every week and just do it for both my own calming demeanor as well as just trying to put out content that people who are new to RPGs and tabletops, um, as well as experienced people who may be suffering burnout or just struggling with ideas can come and get some ideas and hopefully great content. Joe is the Bob Ross of miniature painting, everyone. Happy little miniature. Like, happy little miniature. It's okay. So, <laughs> so check him out. All right. Uh, so I'm Thistle. I'm from Arizona. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, and my character is Black Powder, who represents the kind of pirate adventure genre of stories. So very, like, Treasure Island. <laughs> Uh, Blackbeard's Curse and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, he's uh, his name's Black Powder. He's just a good old scallywag of a character who I'm very excited to play. 
Thank you so much, Thistle. Who would like to go next? I know. All right. My name is Emily. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm from Sacramento, California, and my character is Tori Barnes, and she represents the horror genre. So I have a 17-year-old girl um, who is very curious, gets herself into a lot of trouble, but won't give away too much other than that. (laughs) Thank you, Emily. Who would like to go next? I am Classic Gamer and I go by he, him pronouns. I am from Atlanta, Georgia, and I will be playing Frankie, who is this kind of a mix between like the Frankenstein's monster and it's part of this uh, young adult sci-fi fantasy romance trilogy of books called Awaken. So, can't Thank wait. you, Alex. Could you also tell us about your YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, my YouTube channel is Classic Gamer, and I do a lot of uh, Let's Plays of role-playing game, video games. And right now, I'm obsessed with like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Micah. I go by he, him. Uh, the character I'm representing is Star. Uh, Star comes from the musical romance genre, um, also fantasy as well. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles, California, uh, and Star is a musician who has discovered that there is something, uh, something afoot in his world of musical magic, because music is literal magic. Thank you, Micah. And tell us about your YouTube channel, please. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Hark. Uh, my YouTube channel is called Micah Let's Play. Uh, like Alex, I do Let's Plays as well, but Alex has a little bit more fun with his than mine. But <laughs> but I still have quite a bit of fun. Um, I'm a massive Resident Evil nerd, so if you're into Resident Evil, come say hi. Hey, everybody. I'm Adam. He, him. And I will be representing one of the craziest ideas I ever came up with in Lonic the Super Tough Pinkmon, who is a video game player's guide character. So I get to represent video games and guides and comedy all at once. And I'm super stoked. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. So now that we've all introduced ourselves, I wanted to... Oh, maybe I should introduce myself as well. Hi, (laughs) my name is Angel Arts, for those of you who don't know who I am and are just stumbling upon this video for whatever reason, I have no idea. But um, I am an avid gamer, both video games and tabletop gaming, board games, you you name it. Um, And I've been doing, well, I've been GMing for over a decade now. Uh, well over maybe 15 years Um, and as far as posting campaigns on my YouTube channel this is actually my eighth tabletop campaign that I posted on my channel believe it or not so I'm super excited to uh, get this one started so um, enough about me let's talk about the other six because that's really why you all came here for so for all of you six I want to ask you all some uh, icebreaker questions. I guess my first icebreaker question is, tell us about what inspired you all to come up with your character and your character's world. Where did you get your inspiration from? What made you decide? This is something I think I would be passionate enough to be stuck with for an entire year. <laughs> so for me, I think the thought of using books as a basis and different genres being open to it really kind of allowed me to think about different genre genres and what would really make me interested to be able to create a character that would partake in an active way in different genres. So I kept coming back to kind of whodunit stories because I think they lend themselves really well to curiosity and that kind of push forward to answer questions. So and I real quick went to that kind of thought space and it's something I love to read anyhow and put a twist on it by using a more period rather than current or modern just to 
make it feel a little bit more aged in the library of thought. So really came to me early and just wasn't able to shake it, just kept building on itself. And I think it worked out really good. I also just adored the fact of the idea of using books and book genres as inspiration for an entire character. I've always been a massive reader and I've always loved pirate adventures. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies are the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Uh, and I just, I mixed, I thought it would be very fun, a new level of adventure uh, in a way, some darker elements because pirates are quite dark in subject matter. If you delve deep into it, and yeah, I just, I'm trying to do it without giving too much away for people who don't know who this character is. <laughs> um, I'm just looking forward to playing something who's not necessarily the best person in the world <laughs> and has some reasoning for it and still can be really fun and enjoyable. So actually my character Tori came from another game I had actually played earlier this year, um, which was hosted by um, AJ, who played Al in the Harry Potter campaign. So, <laughs> um, it, and really, she wasn't anything at the time, but he, he threw out a lot of good um, character development questions, and she just kind of formed from there. Um, and this game was a horror genre as well, and it just Kind of fit into the personality that I had created for her um and yeah um so she yeah not the most creative uh character I've come up with she she comes from somewhere else but um I'm excited to kind of develop her from where I started with her a few months ago so my inspiration what I really thought of with this game was like and this is something I do with, in, even in my YouTube channels, I love twisting stories around and always give it an LGBTQIA plus spin on everything that I do. So I thought immediately of Twilight and the young adult, you know, novels like Divergent and The Hunger Games. And, and I felt like, okay, well, what could be really um, unique? And I thought of like older literature. And so my thought went to like, okay, Twilight had vampires. Mine's gonna have Frankenstein's monster. And like, what would be a cooler way than to instead of having this relationship that uh, you know Victor had with his monsters, this kind of antagonistic? What if they actually fell in love? And then that's where kind of the story blossomed. And I'm like, okay, I'm 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 hooked myself. <laughs> and that was my inspiration. Does Frankie sparkle? Um, Frankie doesn't sparkle. Maybe inside he does. That's the beauty. <laughs> it's on the inside. Sparkled. It's like, you know, Beauty and the Beast, right? Like the beauty's mm -hmm. on the inside. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Micah, how about you? Okay, well. Your character doesn't sparkle at all, does, does, does. Not even, a, not even a little bit. <laughs> well, my character, Star, comes from several different things. I am a massive lover of creating things. I'm an artist, so I love to create. And I'm, my imagination is always running like 24-7. So Star was inspired by, first and foremost, Jim and Holograms. And if you don't know what Jim and Holograms is, I mean, YouTube it, like for real. It gives you life. Um, second was I'm a massive comic book nerd, and I love uh, X-Men. X-Men is like one of my favorite comic books of all time. One of being the Stefford Kaku, so the five in one. Uh, not to give any spoilers. Um, another thing I, I absolutely love, I love romance genre. That's one of my favorite genres to read. I love LGBT content because um, I'm a part of the rainbow flag. So happy Pride Month. Also, guys, um, another thing that uh, inspired the character is that I'm a huge lover of fantasy creatures. So I love elves, pixies, dwarves, trolls, you name it. If it's mythological, I'm there for it. So these are the things that inspired Star. And the very last thing that inspired Star, which is kind of random and off, like, I don't even know why this is even a part of it, but a video game character named Poison which is what inspired the pink hair. So if you are a fan of Street Fighter or um, uh, Streets of Fury, I think that's what it's called. If you know the character Poison, Star was also inspired by her. So 
Lonic was never the character I was planning on going forward with. So part of the responsibility is this uh, this GM host we have for that. <laughs> but the original inspiration actually dates back to the Dragon Age Ascension audition process. With the various group chats, Hark st started first dropping the ideas of Athenaeum. And I remember being in a group call with a few people. Hark might have been there. And I know one of the people there was Brandon Carr, who, of course, played multiple characters in the Circle of Fate campaign. Well, he came up with the idea of, I forget if it was a self-help character or something to that effect. It was like a psychologist. And I had already come to the conclusion that there was no way I was getting into this campaign. So I started spitballing ideas for other people. I'm like, well, you could be a dictionary. You could be a this. You could be a that. And I started looking around on my desk. I, I'm part of the problem with the new generation. I don't read enough. I like books with pictures. So whenever I saw my player's guide, I'm like, you can could be a player's guide character. You guys, one of you should take that idea and run with it. It'll be great. And then when I saw the audition starting to come out, nobody was taking that idea. And I was like, well, I'll throw this onto the end of that, but I'm not really confident in it. So I talked with Hales in the community and was like, should I do this? Should I really do this? And Hales says, yes, do it. And Callista, who I'm dating, says, do it. And Micah, who I'd been talking with previously because my hard drive fragged during the audition submission process, says, man, you got this. Don't even worry about it. And because of the three of them and Brandon, unintentionally, I came up with the idea for Lonic by taking a bunch of 90s mascots and them together. And it's beautiful. It's a, it's a glorious... It might you might think of it as a mess, but it's a beautiful mess in my opinion. <laughs> awesome, everyone. Next question. Some of you might have already uh, answered this in your interview, but assuming people haven't seen the interviews uh, yet, uh, could everyone please share with us what are you hoping to uh, to get out of this experience, and what are you hoping to get from each other? So for me, um, I think a couple of things. I think one of them is uh, every time, I, whether it's hosting a game or playing a game, I think one of the biggest things that you get is good experience and a little bit of different or differentiation from what you normally do. So just good experience on something that uh, is new and exciting and different. Uh, get creative from lots of different input from everybody and community. For me, I think one of the biggest things with tabletop RPGs in particular is a sense of community. Um, opening doors for other people to, you know, kind of break out of their shell and try it and driving inspiration and getting people to think that they can, you know, find a safe place to land and jump in and start playing games with both friends, family, and strangers who become friends. So with the cast, I mean, that's one of my biggest goals is I really anticipate that uh, community between us is going to be, I mean, just continue to grow and grow and grow. And and do we become not just acquaintances and and players together but friends so that's one of the biggest things that the community as a whole offers for me it's it's a lot of the same of in terms of from each other and just as someone who's been playing tabletop rpgs for almost eight years now just experiencing something new uh being able to play with new people and build friendships that hopefully like the last time i got into one of your spinoffs i I'm still friends with those people. I still play with them, still talk with them constantly. <laughs> and I love that about tabletop RPGs. I love it about your community being so open and friendly. I haven't met a bad person <laughs> in your community, period. And in all terms of all that, like I'm always just 
want to experience new things, new ways of storytelling, uh, steal a few ideas for my own campaigns that I DM, and stuff like that. And in terms of experiencing in-game, I just want to tell a good story that people enjoy. These are two hard ones to follow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hate to piggyback and kind of take some of your guys' answers already, but it really for the group, it, it, it is about that community and building those friendships. And um, I, I think that's something that is very unique to tabletop um, where you're kind of immersed in this story and you're, you, you're building a rapport with other characters, but you're also building a uh, rapport with other people. And so you not only build friendships within the game, but outside of the game too. And I think that's really exciting and unique to tabletop. And um, for me personally, um, this is, I've never done anything like this before in my life. And so um, it really is, um, like Joe said, it is taking me out of my shell and out of my comfort zone. Um, I don't think I, if you asked me if even five months ago if I was going to be doing something like this, I I I, I would have thought you're crazy. So um I'm just excited to get the experience and get a little bit more involved with the tabletop world. So all right. Yeah. Um I'm gonna echo some of the same sentiments. I mean, it's about like you know, if, if I wanted to just play my a, a video game on my own, I could do that without anyone, right? Like the whole purpose of doing these that, that's so exciting is to interact with everyone. And, you know, I echo, it's building the community, it's building a new group of friends. It's, um, and, and for me personally, what I just adore about tabletop RPGs in general, because I've been doing this for years is, you know, when you are together and you are just creating an amazing scene together, that comes out of nowhere it comes out of our imaginations it comes out of our gut instincts of our characters and it's so amazing when you kind of finish that moment and you're just like in it the adrenaline is flowing whether it's sad or funny or just whatever it is it's like those are some like that's gold right there that's that's why i do this yeah i love those moments well i uh oh, it's time for an echo 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 uh but I, just like Emily, I'm extremely new to tabletop. This is my first time ever doing anything like this. And I want to say for as a new person, being so welcomed with open arms to so many amazing people. Like I agree with Thistle and 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 Joe and Alex and Emily, because you know it's just like you want to do this because you want to explore, you want to get out of your comfort zone, you want to try something new. And to come into this completely blind, because when I say I have zero knowledge, I mean zero knowledge. The only exposure I ever got to this was through Angel Arts Channel, Hark. So to come into this and to be welcomed so graciously, Alex, you gave me credit for helping you with, 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 with Lonic, but honestly, it's your friendship that really made me warm up to the community. And, and that goes for everybody. Thistle, you two, you already know. Thistle is bae. They already know. But anywho, but, and, and, and it's just been such a wonderful and glorious experience. And I hope that, you know, people get that from me too. I hope it's reciprocity that it goes back and forth. So thank you for this opportunity and this experience. And Adam, and I I just noticed Adam, I, is that intentional that you have a green beverage next to you? Well, that see, seems intentional. <laughs> whenever you're moving so fast, you need extra energy. So this is my Legend of Zelda energy potion. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, I could bring the echo through, but you know, they say if something echoes six times, it actually breaks the sound barrier and people die. So I'm going to take a risk and be very specific on a few things that I'm really looking forward to. One of those things is the Ascension crossover, because I've watched every episode of Dragon Age Ascension, and I am dating the person who is currently playing, or who is just finishing playing, Pasha. And so this might be the only real chance we have to both be players in the same room. And she is the love of my life. So how can I not look forward to that? That, and this is a really fantastic community to poach for talent for my own tabletop games. 
<laughs> Please do. And people do it. I encourage it. I encourage it. Yes. <laughs> We have that. We have an open relationship. There's an open relationship in angel arts. It's okay. We can, we can all just play with each other. It's fine. <laughs> we're all, we're all poly when it comes to tabletop. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, other than that, obviously, like the same sentiments everybody's been talking about about building a community, which I think we've already accomplished that goal. Even in the short time we've known each other, we're all fairly friendly with one another and i'm just so excited to see what happens next thank you thank you adam i think just to be fair i should probably answer this question as well um without repeating what everybody says because i agree with what everybody says um as a gm and i think joe can relate to to this and other people alex who've gm'd before this everyone who's gm'd in the past I just want to become a better GM um, because no matter how long you do this, there's always something new to learn. If if not because of the fact that every player is different, every group is different, and every combination of players together as a unit is different. You could be playing in a completely different group with players that you've all that you've played with before, but not in that specific combination, and you still learn something new and different. And, um, you know, I definitely have been learning a lot with all of the campaigns that I've done last year in particular. One of the biggest things I learned in the Dragon Age Season 3 campaign, um, which is a lesson that I think I, I learned the hard way, but I want to apply it more with this campaign, is the importance of explicitly asking for feedback from my players as we go through the campaign. So I always say this at the very beginning, if you have feedback for me, good or, or constructive um, you know, areas of opportunities of improvement, please, it's, you are always welcome to message me privately if you'd like and talk to me about it. Um, but to help you all along, I will try to be more uh, aggressive about asking specifically or explicitly for feedback probably at like certain checkpoints throughout the campaign just to make sure people are still feeling okay if there's like things that i can do to make things a little bit better you know i'll make sure to do that so thank you to the dragon age season three campaign for teaching me that um and speaking of dragon age season three i just finished recording our uh epilogue last weekend and my heart just breaks a little at this at the end of each of these campaigns because these are people that I have bonded with and have seen regularly like every other week I see them every almost uh, Sunday morning and um, it, the idea of, of suddenly not seeing them anymore at least not in the regularity that we did is it's it's very bittersweet um, because obviously I'm super excited to start this campaign um, and because I'm super excited to start this campaign I am going to foresee that the exact same thing, hopefully, if we do if we do this correctly, hopefully the exact same thing will happen and while my heart will break again at the end of a year, but in a good way. Um, so I am very excited for this group. There's a lot of people here that I have not had the opportunity to um, engage with fully in a gaming experience. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to creating a whole new family um, and a whole new generation of heroes and players. So, wonderful. Okay, well, let me start putting people on the spot. Let's start with Micah. So Micah, your, your audition was just, you are pretty much a viewer favorite, it seemed from the, from the get-go. You had the most likes, on your interview, um, so many people, even like outside of uh, the YouTube comments, I'm talking about in the Discord chats, just keep talking about how positive and pleasant and energetic and encouraging of a person. Um, many people have voiced how you're kind of sort of their therapist or their life coach in many different in many ways. Um, and you just bring this energy 
into a group and I I just felt like it was a no-brainer just to add you to this mix just because I just despite the fact that you are new you've got the right attitude you've got the right spirit and I feel like you will make some very hefty contributions both at the at the tabletop table and outside of the tabletop table as well so that's why you are here Micah so thank you for auditioning and for taking a leap of faith thank you for having me oh my I I didn't know I I, I had zero clue okay well I'm happy to serve as, as in any capacity that I can and thank you again for opening your doors to to allow me to do this so I, I feel humbled and thank you Hark you rock <laughs> you're welcome Emily I'll go to you next solid audition solid interview I heard nothing but good things from everyone especially at the committee um, when I was trying to figure out who to pass over to the next stage I think before the interview started I pretty if I was being honest I pretty much pegged you as an automatic in I I was almost automatically was like Emily's in like I'll listen to her interview but I'm pretty sure she'll be fine as long as she doesn't pull a Brandon I don't know like she picked Brandon to be her interviewer so we'll see what happens with that that was a risk (laughs) <laughs> it was a big risk, but I think it paid off. Um, you are also the person that pretty much, I think virtually, if I remember correctly, virtually every single person chose you to be in their dream team. And I'm t- and that includes people who are not in this group, like people outside of this group. I want to say virtually every single one of the 12 picked you. And I think that <laughs> says a lot. <laughs> so... Um, and I think it makes a lot of sense because you just, again, you just exude this, the right attitude. You know, you f- seem like a very cooperative person, somebody who can just get along with anyone, really. Um, and, you know, I'm just really, was really intrigued by your character and your character's storyline um, and just the way that you played off of Brandon. It was just kind of a no-brainer for me as well. So that's why you are here, Emily. Thank you so much for that. That's so, so, so nice. And (laughs) same with Micah. Just totally, I did not expect that. So thank you, Hark. You're very welcome. Joe. I love Joe. Let me just put it out the way. As soon as I found out, he, he sort of deceived me at the beginning because I thought he was a button factory person and I was like oh my gosh he's a button factory person I want to ask him more about it and then I found out it was all a ruse it was like clickbait almost it was almost like clickbait like drawing me in but that's okay I'm it's all right because I I was I really loved Joe's vibe I love like the historical essence that his character brings I think that his his character is going to add a lot of very unique things to the group that I think would be very it would be very glaring if him and his character were not in this group I think it'd be we definitely would be missing something I kind of like the stability of not only his character but also his self I think that's one of the things a lot of people say is like Joe just seems like a really like um competent and reliable I think that's a good word like a reliable player and stable player um and I was very impressed uh in particularly during the chemistry read because a lot of people a lot of things I was looking for in the chemistry read and I'll I'll reveal this now had nothing to do with in character like the chemistry read was not I was not looking at the chemistry between the characters I was looking at the chemistry between the players that was what I was looking for. Everything I was looking for was out of character. And I wasn't looking for somebody. I already knew everyone at that table going in would be able to entertain, like, the viewers. That So, like, that wasn't what I was looking for is how well you could entertain. But I was looking for how well you could play with other people. And Joe did that flawlessly. One of the things that was brought up, not initially by me, although I did notice it, but several people from the committee pointed this out some of the earliest things that Joe did even though he was not necessarily the loudest person in the group one of the first things that he did was he actually started engaging with the other characters and asked where are you all from or something a very simple question like where are you all from and so that means that 
when it was his turn on the spotlight, it wasn't all about him. And it wasn't all about his character. The character was trying to engage, was trying to draw out and trying to interact with the other players and the other characters. And that was what I was looking for in the audition. And so Joe pretty much nailed it. Uh, he knew exactly, I don't know if it was intentional, but he knew exactly what I was looking for. And that's one of the big reasons why he's here. Um, speaking of people who nailed it during the uh, chemistry read, Alex, uh, all around the committee were just like, Alex did great. Because he was the perfect balance between making sure that his character shined, Frankie did shine, but also engaged with the other players. And Alex just seemed to be, uh, what's the right word? Like, I, want, I don't want to call him amoeba, but he, he's a very adaptive player. Like, he was able to adapt not just in the actual role playing, but he knows when to jump in and out as he needs to. And when he knows when to lift other people up, and then he knows when to lift himself up. And then it was just really natural. And I think that across the board of, of all of the people at that table people like just saw Alex being the most natural he just seemed the most comfortable and is in his own element um during that audition and that's why I was like he's a solid person into the campaign so that's why you're here Alex <laughs> Thistle so Thistle and I have had quite a history together because Thistle has been auditioning for this cam for a campaign for several years, which I'm very flattered about. And even with every single campaign that Thistle did not make it into, Thistle always remained in, ha always was very mature about it, always had very good spirits, was always a good sport, and always wanted to learn how to be better. Um, Thistle, they are very good with feedback and asking for feedback. The smartest thing that, that Thistle did last time was to not only ask me about feedback from the last audition, but then keeping that very much in mind for the second time. And I told Thistle this like before in a separate chat, but um, what, was the, what was the biggest piece of feedback that I gave you again, Thistle, in the... Uh, Dragon Age campaign auditions. Uh, make sure your character's memorable. <laughs> yeah. Make sure they stand yeah. out. I, I explicitly told Thistle, that's the only thing that they needed to do. That's the only thing. Um, and so that's exactly what they did when um, they brought in Black Powder. Uh, they went into that audition, and that was the one thing I needed from them to pretty much get them into the campaign, is I just want to see, can you make your character memorable? And uh, they knocked it out of the park, <laughs> like definitely knocked it out of the park. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I didn't need Thistle to be in the chemistry read because the ke black powder was in. Like there was no necessary, it wasn't necessary for me to, I already knew that Thistle could play off of characters or off of players well outside of role playing because I had the opportunity to play with Thistle in the Harry Potter campaign. So I already knew that was was perfectly legit and fine. So that was one of the reasons I, I didn't need to put them into the into the chemistry read at all. Um, so just to be clear, um, and I told them this before, uh, this is not a pity this is not a pity like entrance into the campaign. They they earned it. They legitimately earned it um, getting into this campaign after all these years, and I'm so so excited to finally play with you officially in the main in the main cast, Thistle. Thank you. <laughs> this was lucky year number seven. <laughs> so. Yes, lucky year number seven. <laughs> so for those of you who have been trying for many years, you know, this this is hopefully this is a testament. Keep trying. Keep trying. There's no it doesn't hurt to keep trying. You can only get better. And last but not least, Adam. So Adam, I know that this character, like you said, was not your original character that you were planning on playing, and I kind of pushed you or nudged you into this. But as soon as I heard about Lonic's concept, I was just, I was so on board. And selfishly, a lot of it is because 
I feel like I'm I'm a huge video gamer. I mean, it's what I normally do in my Let's Plays. I'm a huge gamer. I grew up in the 90s, so that was totally my jam. And as a GM, you kind of have to take in consideration what's in your wheelhouse. Like, what what can you, which characters and worlds do you think you could do justice with? And I really felt like with a character like Lonic, I could seriously do a lot of justice with it, hopefully, um, just because I'm so familiar with the source material. And then... I'm so happy that you asked for Sam to be one of your interviewers. I know you gave me three and Sam was your third, but I was like, nah, nah, nah. Like, I know that you picked these two people first. I was like, nah, nah, I need Sam. Like, if I want to put Adam up for success to really show his full potential, I know Sam's got this. And Sam even contacted me before and it was like, so... Hark, like, I'm trying to come up with something, like, emotional for Lonic's character, because I know that's feedback you gave for me. And I was like, I understand why you said that, Sam, but Lonic is not supposed to be an emotional character. He can be emotional, but he is comedy. This guy needs to... You need to make me laugh. If you're able to make me laugh hysterically during this scene, that's all Adam needs to do, and he's in. That's And so Sam had a mission, and he set up things so well for Adam to be I was laughing hysterically I, I don't know if you could tell while, while you're watching me but I could not that was legitimately genuine tears of like utter hysterical joy and the whole time and it was just f so much fun hopefully this was kind of obvious it was fun just editing his interview um, cause I was like, oh man, there's so much I could do with this character. I just really want this character in so badly. So I was so rooting for Lonic and I was so rooting for you, Adam. And even outside of that, Adam, you have made so many contributions to the community just in general. Like you have been so active and just such a supportive and really a very integral part of the Discord community. Um, now that in and of itself isn't enough to get you into a campaign, but everything all together, I'm really, really excited to have you play with us, Adam. So thank you so much <laughs> for auditioning. Oh, what can I say except so much debt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Sweet. So... Do you all want to uh, do some role playing? <laughs> we are going to begin with. Does anybody know what we're going to begin with? Origins. Origin stories. <laughs> yes, we're going to be doing origin stories. So, in GURPS, we actually don't technically roll for initiative because we just go in speed order. But I do want to make this a little bit randomized. So if everyone could just roll 3d6s for me. Micah, do you know what a 3d6 is? <laughs> okay. See, this is... Uh, who would like to tell Micah what a 3d6 is? <laughs> um, a 3d6 are three, because I actually have dice, I can show you. Three of these little guys, the square ones. Yes. So three is in the number of dice. D stands for dice. And then six means the sides of the what dice. sides, the sides of the dice. So a 3D three is three, three sided dice. Uh, a 5D 10 is five 10 sided dice. So the good news is in GURPS, Everything is six-sided. Everything is D6s. So normally 3D6. So um, it looks like we have Emily with 15. Oh, Emily with 15. This is going to be an interesting way to start things. Um, followed by Adam, and then Joe, and then Frankie, and then Thistle, and then I think Micah's rolling. Yeah, so Micah, you uh, do slash R space 3d6 so i wasn't i wasn't recording when alex made that comment so could you just repeat what you were saying alex about <laughs> micah's role i would say of course micah would roll all sixes in his 3d6 roll like and then just blow us all out of the water it's so natural i wasn't trying 
I wasn't trying. I think when I was trying to explain 3D sixes, Micah was like, oh, three sixes? Sure, I'll row three sixes. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, three sixes. Like, how do I do this? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you, everyone, for your help. I appreciate it. Micah needs a lot of hand-holding. Let's just be real about it. (laughs) I kind of feel like we're all being hustled a little bit. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We got a shark. We got a shark here. No! (laughs) All right. So, let us begin with musical magic. Yes, musical magic. So, um... Star, you are about to give one of your biggest performances yet. This is going to be outdoors at this uh, amphitheater kind of looking thing. Considering that not everyone has seen your interview, um, can you please uh, describe for us uh, what your show is like, what your performance is like? Cool beans. So, Star's performances are like technological light shows with music, dancing, and the like. So to start the show off, um, the stages are usually dark. And then you start to hear the thrum of the music and the lights are pulsing to the sound of the music. So just imagine the sound of a beat going. And you see the lights in rainbow color going to the beat. And as the music starts to pick up, you start to see a figure rise out of the ground, standing completely still with their hands in front of them. And right when the music hits a certain beat, when it goes to, and it goes boom, and the wings pop out, and the wings pop out shimmering in rainbow color. And you're seeing those sparkles come off of them. And then from there, Star would start to sing. So Star would start to sing a classic favorite of mine by Kidney Houston of the world. <laughs> wow. Okay. I want to dance with somebody. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> and as they begin to sing, you know, the clock strikes upon the hour and the sun begins to fade. So when that starts to happen, they start to open their arms, but you see multiple arms following, almost like a, a Hindu goddess with the multiple arms, like um, Shiva. And then the red one would step forward. So Ruby would step forward because Ruby is able to hit those falsetto notes. And said, so, when the night falls, my lonely heart calls. And then um, Sapphire would step out saying, I want to dance with somebody. Then Amethyst and R- Rhyolite would start actually dancing with each other on stage as the other two, as the red and blue, are actually singing in unison, hitting those falsetto and high notes together. And that would just get the crowd up and roaring and excited it for this performance from there star would pull themselves back together to bring the audience back down after a series of really high pitch and really energetic performance but now they're about to bring everybody down they want to they want to sell it and they want to bring it home because they want the audience to have those feel good vibes i don't know if you've ever been to like uh, a janet jackson or mike or beyonce the experience that is a beyonce concert let's just be real about it so as they get ready to close out their performance they would be like Guys, before we close out tonight, I want to get emotional with you guys. I want you guys to understand what it's like to have that special someone in your life. So they would split apart again. And each one would take a seat and grab a microphone. You know what boy bands are like. They all sit in a seat. They take that sexy guy pose. And then um, Rhyolite, the green, which is mainly a lot of his nervousness and anxiety, would start the song saying, um, uh, the heartache lives on. Um, But the chorus goes on inside, but who's the one you're clinging to instead of me? And as they uh, continue singing, each one would pick up where Rhyolite left off as they're closing out the song, singing in motion. So, and then um, to finalize the performance, Star would come back together and say, it's just emotions taking me over. But even though it's only one on the stage, they would all be singing at the same time. So you would hear one person singing from one voice, and that's to create the illusion that Star does not possess any type of any magic whatsoever. So as the performance dies down, 
you would hear all the voices say, thank you guys so much tonight. We just want you to know that we love you and we want to thank you for joining us on this musical and magical journey. From there, the lights would go out, but when the lights go out, it would sparkle the words, thank you for coming in like the shape of Star's wings in the set, like kind of surrounding the word as the lights dim out and then Star would ex exit stage left, as they say. Awesome. Thank you for setting that up for us, Micah. I want to back up just a little bit because I want to back up in the middle of your performance. And Mike and um, Micah, let's pretend that there's a moment where Star, you know how in some concerts they like ask, they like put, pick a person from the audience to come up. So let's pretend that you're, you're planning on doing that. So Adam, I would like to you to be the lucky audience member and you can decide if you want to be like you know, the oh my gosh, crazy star fan boy, fan girl, whatever. Or you could be like the boyfriend that your girlfriend like dragged you and you don't really know star from Kitney Houston or whatever. So you, I'll let you decide. Okay, yeah, I'll let you decide. So let's say star, you just randomly pick someone from the audience and your eyes land on this individual. And Adam, remember that everybody here is a uh, mystical or animal character. So on the spot, Adam, come up with a character. What does your character look like? And uh, what, well, what is, what's his, their demeanor at this moment at this concert? There aren't any humans here, but other fantastical races exist. And I've said to many people that I fit the profile of a fantasy dwarf quite well. A I'm a dwarf, dwarf who was <laughs> Dragged here by the heels by his elven girlfriend who won't stop talking about this stupid show. I okay. just want to drink my coffee and drink <laughs> my beer and dig for gold. That's okay. all. And dig for gold. Okay. Yes. Yes. Maybe, let's say you even have a pickaxe or something. I don't know, <laughs> don't know why you need a pickaxe at a concert. But. Somehow it got oh, through the yeah. metal detectors. I don't know, but um, hey. So we'll say that Star sees this this dwarf, and it, dwarf doesn't seem to be enjoying themselves. So maybe you're trying to like change change that frown upside down. You know what I'm saying? So let's go for it. Go for it, Star. What happens? Star would be like, okay, who wants to be my lucky new stage dancer or backup dancer? And I think I know just the person in mind, just the little being. And he'll like look around, but he already knows he spotted the dwarf with the pickaxe. He already saw him. He had him pegged from Jump Street. And he's like, you there, Mr. Pickaxe. I want you on my stage now. And then you'll see the other uh, versions of Star Step out, hands on their hips and they're all like, come on, big boy. You know you want us. Um. <laughs> I imagine that the audience <laughs> just lifts him up and crowd surfs him on stage. What's your, what is your um, character's name, Adam? Bone Pickaxe McMiney. Okay. Uh, we'll say that your girlfriend calls you Miney then. And so she's just <laughs> shrieking. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Miney. Oh, I'm so jelly. Oh my goodness. Oh. Go, baby! Go, baby! Go! <laughs> get him! Get him my autograph, please! Get him an autograph! <laughs> so, as I drink... only promise to try. <laughs> <laughs> so you're being crowd surfed over, and they finally, you know, bring him over to the to the stage. So, once Miney's on stage, he's gonna look down and say, "All right, little man, tell us what's your name." Um. My friends call me Bone. Does anyone else call you by any other name? Someone special out there? Yes! Yes! Woo! I'm going to assume I that... I love you, Star! I love you! <laughs> Just we the love light is leaving his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. I love it. He said, I'm going to assume that very hot elf down there is, uh, is, is your <gasps> special lady. Yes or yes? He called me hot. Did you hear that? He yes. called me hot. <laughs> cool beans. So you know what? Let's give her a show. Let's show her why you are the man for her. So what Star is going to do 
he's gonna start singing the song I wanna look good for you. But as he starts, as the music starts up and the lights start to shimmer uh, with the sound of the music, they're going to break off again. And if he allows it, uh, one of the stars, uh, Rhyolite, is going to wrap his arm around your neck, but in like a romantic sort of sense, as they start to sing, you know, say, I'm a marquee diamond. And they said, let the Tiffany be jealous. Mm. So as they're singing for you and dancing around you, they're all they're still locking eyes with the elf while they're dancing around you to kind of get you in the mood of dancing so you would feel the music so you'd be excited and your girlfriend would see you like dancing all hot with like all these hot pixie boys. So from there, if 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 uh if Monty allows it, um uh, Amethyst will take the pickaxe and like twirl it around like a baton as they're twirling it around. Um <laughs> I, I think, think there's Sapphire. a moment of what wait, wait. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> right. And it's like everybody notices this awkward moment, but you know, because you know, Beyonce like is a con- and constantly in character. He's like, you know, he like he struggles with it a little bit, but then he actually gets it, kind of stumbles back, but then gets right back into dancing as if nothing happened. <laughs> then Ruby and Sapphire would pick you up, like pick you up, and you would be on each one of their shoulders Whoa. while they're dancing with you. <laughs> And to add insult to injury, they have the nerve to start floating around the stage with you while they're singing the song, like being so over the top. And then the one in the middle, um, uh, uh, Topaz, the yellow one, his confidence would point at the at the elf and then indicate for her to come up on stage as well. Because why not? Because this is his girl. So it's like, yes. So he encourages the crowd to like, get her on stage, get her yeah. on stage. Let's go, let's go. She's definitely like shoving you know, people out of the way <laughs> very aggressively. <laughs> like she's not being like, she's being totally rude about it too. But like, but it's okay. Like everybody understands. And so she's just, she gets herself up on stage and she's just doing one of those like, <gasps> <laughs> like trying to reach out, but she knows she shouldn't. But then she's like, <laughs> <laughs> she is oh my god, hearts in her eyes, obsessed. And then while that's happening, Amethyst, the purple one, will come up behind her and say, "All right, love, are you ready for a fun show?" So then he'll grab her by the waist and lift her up, so he'll fly her towards uh, Ruby and, uh, and Sapphire. So they're like, so her and her boyfriend are facing each other as they're like going in a clockwise circle. As the other versions of Star are still singing the song, "I'm Gonna Look Good for You." So they're getting at, uh, they're getting to the end of the song. They trust me, I can take you there. Trust me, I trust me, I. And as they're continuing to sing off each other, and these two are dancing around each other, like flying around each other, they're gonna get them close enough so they can actually kiss in front of the audience, creating that like hype moment of them actually kissing because, you know, they just want to look good for you, you know? So that's how they're going to close out that moment. So, will the lovers actually kiss money? What's going to happen? I think, I think right at that first pass where their noses like touch, that Bone just like, the words escape from his mouth, this is your fault. And then on the second pass, actually a connection. <laughs> She doesn't seem to. Uh, she didn't seem to notice um, because she's just so absorbed by everything that's happening. But yeah, she just grabs a hold of you, and it's not subtle. Like she is so like energized, and the adrenaline is just rushing through her. Um, so the pheromones are definitely like emanating, and so she just grabs a hold of you and just kind of, you know, oh yeah, <laughs> makes out with you. You probably may not may or may not reciprocate but she's like she wants you and she wants you bad <laughs> she is all over you <laughs> and while this was happening you're noticing amethyst Ru- ruby and raya like are like struggling to hold them up because she's like so aggressively on them so they're like oh crap <laughs> we don't want to drop them while they're trying to still fly in a circle and then you know topaz uh the yellow one would stand up and said he said because she wanted to look good for him Look at that. He said, now for all you lovers out there, let's see you look good for your lover. And so they're gonna like low key bring them back down. I don't know if they're still making out, but they're gonna definitely put them down so they can continue their little uh, uh, makeout session. Star will bring themselves back together and security will escort the lovers kindly off stage. (laughs) And they get ready for their next set. While you are leaving, um, at some point uh, the elf 
comes up for air at some point. <laughs> and she says, so mine. She says, looking at you down, up and down. How about we come back to your place and how about you mine for some gold? <laughs> she says. Now you're talking my language. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you go exit stage right, I suppose. Uh, and you continue your performance. So, Star, everything else goes, you know, just as, just like it normally does. The crowd's loving it, they're enjoying it, you're having a great time. And then you finally get to the, the final song, you know, the ending, um, where you're gonna give your, like, big thank you uh, message to the group. At least that's what how you planned it. But suddenly, as the music is like, you know, coming down and you know, it's it's softening a bit and you feel like you've got this super intimate moment with this group. All of a sudden, you start hearing across from the amphitheater boom 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 like this this heavy beat that is completely going against the beat of the music that's kind of playing underneath it, like completely <clears throat> jarringly against. Oh, crap. And you see on the other side, in this wide open field, this bur like large giant, it almost looks like a vine that uh -huh. just springs up from the ground. Like, um, and this big giant vine gets larger and larger and larger, almost the size of a small tree trunk, basically. Mm -hmm. And then at the very tip of the branch, you start seeing this bud, this bud of a, of a flower. And the bud grows larger and larger and larger until suddenly it starts to open up and blossom into this ginormous flower. Okay. And as the flower opens up, to your surprise, and the audience is starting to notice this too, because you know this is not something that they see every day. There's a big stage inside of this flower, and um, on this stage, you can hear the music playing loud. And this is hip hop. This is hip hop music playing loud, and it's got a very like funky beat and very high energy. And it's very catchy, like you might hate to admit it, but it is pretty catchy and the audience seems to be finding it really catchy too. And you immediately recognize that this is a rival group of yours. The Broken Oath Band. And Broken Oath are a bunch of humanoid fox girls. And I'm kind of thinking like Destiny's Child, salt and Peppa kind of vibe with these fox girls. And so they're like starting to um, uh, en entice the crowd over to them now. So they're trying to poach, poach your audience members. And it actually seems to be working. Like some of them are starting to trickle off and um, their theatrics are, are different from yours. Yours is more about like lights and bright colors and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're they're singing and they're playing and they're they got all these like really crazy extravagant dance moves. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, as they as they shoot their hands out, mm -hmm. doves start flying like <laughs> summoning from their from their arms. And then okay. you start seeing hawks flying out as well. And they're all doing like these different synchronized things in the air and the doves actually uh, fly around to form words like actual writing words into the sky and uh, this seems to really get the attention of your audience members and they're starting mm -hmm. to like they're starting to move towards this group how does star react or what does star do as you're witnessing this atrocity right <laughs> first off so i'll be like Oh, so that uh, they're still singing, mind you, they're they're still trying to stay in character while this is all taking place. Sure. So they're gonna like give Stormy a look, and then you're gonna see the purple one, Amethyst, like low key like dancing off stage, and he's gonna walk up to Stormy and say, "Initiate S T A R R," right? So from there, that's an indication to get the stage to levitate. So I don't know if you guys have ever played Final Fantasy X two where Yuna's on stage, where um, the yes. opening performance, that's what's about to happen. 
Okay. And then he's gonna look to his um, he's gonna look to his band, and he's gonna say, "All right, boys, match their beat with that beat." And so they start nice. to match the the okay. same sound, so that way it's instead of it clashing, it's amplifying what they're doing. Nice. He said, "Say so these little bitches want a show." He said, "All right, boys, let's give them a show." <laughs> so right. the cattiness is coming. <laughs> so Amethyst, who's his confident, is gonna say, "Give me a beat," and so he's gonna start playing the principle of pleasure. So okay. they're gonna all be hitting those notes. Like, it's the pleasure principle. Oh, 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 oh. And then he's gonna snap himself back together and explode with his starburst as he mimics the birds. So the birds, but instead of them being like regular doves, they're gonna be rainbow doves with sparkles. So as they're flying around, they're creating like a crisscross rainbow effect, almost like when they shoot rockets across the sky, but it's going to interact with the actual doves and hawks that they have kind of interweaving between them. As their words are spelling up, they're gonna be going between the words, creating a rainbow effect, kind of getting the, the audience to come back to Star as he's like singing at the top of his lungs. Nice. So the battle of bands commences, <laughs> and the audience seems to be torn. A good number of star loyalists are sticking around. There's still a few that, that are finding your performance also impressive, so they're like on the fence. But several others like, nah, man, like this this hip hop stuff is where it's at, and so they're going over to the hip hop. So the uh, the uh, other group, the um, Broken Oath, seems to notice that you're starting up the ante, and so they're like. All right, well, Star thinks they've got what it takes. Well, how about this? And they're going to start, you know, coming to the climax of their song, and they'll raise their hands up in the air. And all of a sudden, to your probably big shock and surprise, uh -huh. things start falling from the sky. It's not water. Are those... Are those... Donuts? It's <gasps> actually falling. Donuts, and we're talking un uh, we're talking like bright colored frosted donuts with like sprinkles, rainbow sprinkles coming down. Several of the audience members like catch one, they give it a sniff, <laughs> and they take a bite. Okay. You all gotta try this. This gr this group's got free food. And then you hear this woman say, "Oh my gosh, it's God! It's raining donuts! Hallelujah! It's raining donuts!" And several people are definitely like <laughs> running over to the other group with all of the free food that they're summoning right now with these rainy donuts. <laughs> so not a problem. As they're still singing, as they're singing the pleasure principle, what Star's gonna do, he's gonna make a signal to Stormy to move the stage over to the big giant pod. Yes. So they're gonna so he's gonna be like, not a problem. We ain't got raining donuts, but we're about to really interact with this group. So as they're hovering over, you know, let's just be real about it. Sapphire is going to grab a donut and be like low-key chowing down while the stage is flying over, while the others are still singing. You know, and he'll be licking his fingers while they're getting ready to join. Yeah. So once their stages connect, Star is going to go over onto oh. their stage. Oh, man. And then okay. he's going to go up to the lead singer, and he's going to start singing in her face. Like, you know oh. what? Bitch, you brought it, I'm bringing it. You brought it, no problem. And you know, Sapphire's still collecting donuts and eating, let's just be real about it. <laughs> and they're like starting to sing like face to face. And then the other ones are gonna go to the other singers and start like singing and dancing on them all, you know, gyrating oh. and, and as much as possible. Um, What is Miney doing while all this is happening, just out of curiosity? Does Miney react to the donuts? Does Miney react to anything? See, whenever you work real hard in the mines, your blood sugar gets real low. And if you're gonna have, have energy for the bone zone later tonight, then you gotta get that sugar fix. So I he's basically, have you ever seen like a small pig root for truffles? Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> he's basically that on the ground. He's picking up the donuts that people didn't catch. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Your girlfriend says, Miney, don't don't go over to those sellouts. You don't know what's in those donuts. They might be laced with poison or something. It might put you to sleep. Yeah, I could I could definitely I could definitely fall asleep with the poison. 
That's what it is. You poison. Star, let us roll your first um, a, a contest uh, against the performance of the uh, of the other group. So you're gonna okay. roll a performance check. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm gonna give you just a minus two penalty to this, just because um, the it's kind of hard to compete against free food. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, um, those, the donuts, man. Those right? Nice. Hey. Okay, Whoa. nice. So, you are singing into the faces of the lead singer, and despite, you know, some of their cheap tricks, the, uh, the singer seems to be a little, a bit phased by this, and they start to, at, at one point, they actually pause because it looks like they like forgot the next set of lyrics <laughs> and that seems to be putting a bit of a dent to their performance and there's a few people that are starting to like boo a little bit says ah these donuts aren't that great anyway and um, uh, I think that uh, one of the uh, other members one of the foxes starts to get up on to who's who's like the red one is the most aggressive one right anger Yes, that's Ru Ruby. Ruby is passion and rage. Okay. So a combination of the two. One of one of the fox fox girls goes over and just gets up on on Ruby's face and like tries to. Are they physical? Like, can they actually like shove them or push them? Yes, they're physical. Okay. They're solid. So one of them just kind of like gives the red one a shove and like basically is trying to start a fight, essentially, right on stage. <laughs> <laughs> So what Ruby's gonna do when she pushes, when she pushes him, he's gonna wrap his arm around her and like pull her into him, almost like making it look like they're about to kiss. And yeah. he's gonna, uh, and what he's gonna do, because Ruby can sing falsetto, he's gonna hit a falsetto note to kind of like chill her out a little bit, kind of like using his voice to yeah. relax her, um, trying to calm her with passion, if if, if that's allowed. Okay. Um, and as he does this. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you guys know the song um, by his name is Frank Ocean. He said, "No, that tornado flew around my room before it came." Excuse him. So that's what he's gonna start singing to her as he's pulling her, as she's pushing him to pull her into him. So instead of her arms pushing his chest, it's more like she's pressed against him as he's singing is like quickly into her face to try to relax her. So from okay. there, um, he's gonna actually float up with her. So his wings are gonna start flapping. And as he's like spinning around, he's gonna continue singing this song to her. And then the others are gonna mimic what he's doing the song. So they're hitting different octaves as they're singing the song. So okay. from there, when he brings her back down, he's almost like, I don't know if you've ever been with a dancing partner when they grab your hand and they spin you around kind of like and then when he does he's going to release her so that way she spins back into her group and then they're going to continue singing that song and then they're going to bring themselves together and because they heard the people booing technically they disrupted his show and he could be a b-word about it but what he is going to do is say guys broken oath you know, they came to crash the party, but look what they brought, free food. And who doesn't like a free food, you know, buffet with a party crasher, guys? So let's give these girls a round of applause to kind of hype up the audience, you know, to make them feel good. Yeah, the the uh, the group feels really annoyed that you're trying to, like, spin this into something positive. Um, and, but because of your performance role, for now, they're just gonna let it go and just go with it, but because they really wanted to start a scene. But uh, I don't know. They might uh, they might pop up a little bit later if when you least expect it. So <laughs> I think you managed to I think you managed to take care of that, put out that fire at least temporarily, and so we will end the scene there. Great. Nice. That cool. was fun. Talking about. <laughs> that, was fun. Awesome. that was a lot of fun. I, oh say, I felt myself at that concert. That was, that was, <laughs> I was gonna say, was my <laughs> girlfriend <laughs> named Karen? <laughs> yes, yes. If only we should have asked oh. that question. I should have asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I I know that girl. <laughs> I I stopped bringing my friends to concerts because of a friend like that. It's like really, dude. Oh, no. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it down. It, it's people like that is why I've never been to a concert. <laughs> oh.
<laughs> oh my god oh my goodness i couldn't uh yeah i i went to a performance and my friend was basically trying to get on stage and like security had to pull her off and it was just like oh. it was just like and we were in the same car together so it wasn't like i couldn't be like i don't know her i don't know her but it was like mm. god damn it i know her so <laughs> bring her back over here <laughs> 